Good morning, class. I'm um, Princess Bravo, your earth science teacher. So, our topic for today for this introduction, okay, the meaning of earth science, it means it's all about earth. Okay, we discuss in the whole sem about the earth science. Don't look at me like that. It's not my fault. So, class, what happening? There is a crack in the middle. It means there is a ground shaking. So that is possible because of the ground movement of tectonic plate or either an earthquake. So earth science class is a study of the earth and of the universe around it based on the assumption that the cause of the natural phenomena can be discovered through careful observation and experimentation. The universe, the universe is all matter including Earth, galaxy, and intergalactic space. The understanding of the origin of evolution structure of the fate of the universe is called cosmology. The formation of the universe, a lot of theories. The first one is the Big Bang theory. Berbeli, cosmological model of the early development of the universe. Perceived of the massive explosion around 13.7 billion years ago, or that is the age of the universe, either 13.8 billion years ago. After the explosion, the surrounding were at high temperature, about 10 billion Fahrenheit. There is an aggregation of the fundamental particles such as the neutron, electron, and proton. So here is the picture that happening of the aggregation of the Big Bang theory. And we have here the oscillating universe theory. The state that the universe continued to expand and then collapse, it means that the galaxy of the started to be moving away from each other. However, glass, after they reach a certain space of a distance, they start to collapse and back again. It means it is a cycle, class. Okay, there is another collapse and then expand, and that is oscillating universe theory. Then let's go to the steady state theory. According to Sir James James in 1920, Fred Hoy revised in Herman Bondi and Thomas Cole, the alternative to the BBT, they state that the universe is always expanding in a constant average density. Matter continues to create to form a cosmic or celestial body. It means the steady state theory, it's always been the same since the beginning. They expand, but the constant, the average, and the density. And here, class, the nebular theory or called the nebular hypothesis. So according to this theory, class, that the solar system started as the huge cloud of gas, and that's called the nebula, which mostly composed of hydrogen and helium gases. The nebular theory step here is the five stages, class. Okay, it started with collapse and then spinning and then flattening and then condensation. And the last one is accretion. The core of the smaller masses remaining that is turning into a planet. While the most of the remain in the state of the high temperature, it's called the sun. And another one class we have here, the creationist theory. This theory states that the God the supreme being created the whole universe. The proof can be read in the Holy Bible. It's stipulating that God created the heavens and the earth, including the man. So again, that is creationist theory. We have here the steps of the Big Bang theory class. First one is the singularity. It means it eats infinity density, a tiny dot to have a contained, all of the mass and space-time of the universe. This comes from the observation of the cosmic microwave background, which contain the afterglow of the light and radiation left over from the Big Bang. Next one, inflation. So this stage of the Big Bang was so weak, hundredth of a billion of a trillion of a second, all of the energy and the heat from the explosion was shot out. And whenever it travel created space. Next one, the primordial soup. This stage was when the universe began superheated phase and called primordial soup. So during this time, 
the heat was so high and neutron proton and the electrons started to join. At the same time, class, there were things um, called the light photons that were continuous bouncing or launching onto electron, which caused a constant glow coming from the universe. And then the fourth one is the recombination. So recombination in 380 years after the Big Bang, matter cooled enough for a charged electron and proton, the first became bound to form the electrical neutral hydrogen atom and kill you. So the fifth stage class, that is the dark ages. During this time, the clump of the gas collapsed enough to form the very first stars in the galaxy. The emitted our ultraviolet light from this energetic event cleared out and destroyed and most of the surrounding neutral hydrogen gas. And the last step of the Big Bang Theory, it's called the birth of the stars in the galaxy. So this gravity amplify a slight irregularities and density of the primordial gas. Even as the universe continues to expand rapidly, the packet of gas become more denser, so the stars ignite within this packet and the group of stars become the earliest galaxy. So this point is still perhaps 12 to 15 billion years ago and until the present. So that is the steps of the Big Bang Theory. I will enter also the solar system. So we have again the eight planets of the solar system. The planets are categorized according to their composition and sizes. There are two main categories of planets. We have here the small rocket planet and the gas giant. When we say small rocket planet, that is the Mercury, the Venus, Earth, and Mars. And the gas giant, that is the Jupiter. Saturn, Uranus, and the Neptune. So the small rocky planet or called the inner planet, again, we have the Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. They are all made mostly of rock and metal. They are very heavy. They move slowly in space. They have no rings and few moons. But the outer planet, the Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and the Neptune, they are made mostly of gases primary hydrogen and helium. They are very light for their size. They have wings and many moons. So in 2006, Pluto was observed to belong to a different region. Okay, On the outer region of the solar system, composed of the frozen comet and the asteroid. So the Pluto class was reclassified by the International Astronomical Union as a dwarf planet.